Hello children! Are y'all ready for today's Sunday School? Now I hope you know what day is it today. It is Good Friday. And to this week is a very special week. Why? Because we are remembering about how Jesus came to this earth for the first time where he died for us to save us from our sins. And he also arose again and he went to heaven. Now, as we remember today, especially where we remember about the death of Jesus Christ, we have a very important lesson to learn. But before that, now make sure all of us are ready. If your koko or your jete is not sitting right beside you, you tell him or her, Auntie Shermaine is going to start. You better sit upright and listen carefully. Or if your meimeis or your titis are not listening to Auntie Shermaine, make sure that they are listening, okay? So before we start, what shall we do? Of course, we must pray, okay? So hands together, right, eyes closed, and let's focus. And listen to Auntie Shermaine as I pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you even for this Good Friday that we can all still come together to listen to your word and to remember how our Lord Jesus Christ has sacrificed his life for us, has given his life at Calvary to die for us so that all who believe in him will have everlasting life because of the forgiveness of sins. We pray, Father, that you will quieten our hearts so that we may learn well. And we pray that all things that we do will be for your glory alone. And we pray at this time, especially for the children who are all around the world that do not know Jesus, that even today, they may come to know Jesus, Him as their Saviour, that all may be saved, even as that is what pleases you. Please be with us and bless us. Father, we ask for forgiveness of all the naughty things and sins that we have done, and we pray that you'll help us to live and to love you more and more each day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, now before I begin, let us sing one song first. And this song, I'm pretty sure all of you will also know, okay? But if not, Auntie Shermaine will now give you the words. We will sing it one time as I point to the words. Please follow. And then the second time, we shall sing with actions okay are you ready now this song is called what can wash away my sin what can wash away and cleanse us from all the naughty things that we do and what is it nothing but the blood of jesus okay are you ready one two three what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well done, okay? Now let us sing with action this time. Are you ready? One, two, follow Auntie Charmaine, and three. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well done. Okay, now Auntie Shomin today is going to help us to learn this lesson. And the title for today's lesson is this. Let's read it together. The death which gives life. Now this lesson is taken from the Gospel of John chapter 12 verses 23 and 24. The death which gives life. Life. Now, Auntie Charmaine has a question for you. Now, have you ever experienced or have you ever been through somebody's death? Now, I'm quite sure some of you would have. Now, when somebody dies, what do you think is everyone's response? How do people react? Have you ever seen somebody laughing? Ha ha ha! Or have you seen somebody making a lot of loud music at someone's funeral? Of course not. What would most people be doing? Or everyone, what would they be doing? Yes, they would be crying or they would be very sad. Now why? Because when somebody dies, we know that that is the end of his life. No more. Nothing can raise the person up. Nothing this person can even do or say anymore. His life has come to an end and what is left is just memories. And that, was, and that is what makes people sad. But today, now in the Bible, in the book of John, in these two verses, 23 and 24, Jesus has a very special lesson for us. A lesson about his death that not only does it bring, does it not bring sorrow or sadness, it's also a lesson to us that his death gives people life. Now, what am I talking about? First of all, now let us now read the two verses over here. Now we know that Jesus, when he entered into the Passion Week, he first arrived at Jerusalem, right? Where everybody took up palms and then they shouted what? Hosanna! Safe now, King! And when he entered Jerusalem, Jesus knew one thing. He was not here to become their king. Well, Jesus was here to die. And in response, this was what he told the disciples. Now let us read these two verses. John chapter 12, verses 23 and 24. Alright? Now for all of you older kids, especially those in Little Ark, if you have your Bible, now this is the time that you should take out your Bible and flip to the Gospel of John chapter 12. And please find verses 23 and 24. Now, where is the Gospel of John? Where is it? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, very good. Now, as we are all there, those of you who do not have your Bible, you may look at the screen right now and together we will look at these two verses. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three, let's read John chapter 12, verses 23 and 24. It says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now what is Jesus trying to say when he said this to the disciples? The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Now, Jesus told them that the time is here. The time has arrived 
for the Son of Man to be lifted up to glory, to receive all honor and praises. Now, what is Jesus telling them? Is Jesus telling the disciples, Now, this is the time that I am going to get my whole kingdom. I'm going to make, be made king. I'm going to be the king of kings and the lord of lords. Or is Jesus telling the disciples this, I'm going to become a superstar. That's why Jesus said that he'll be glorified. Is that it? Of course not. Now, what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that the time is here for him to die. Now, how is that going to glorify him? Now, look at what Jesus says in verse 24. If you remember, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now, what is Jesus trying to teach over here? Now, what is a corn of wheat? Now, a corn of wheat just simply means that it is a seed of a weed. Now, what is a wheat plant? Now, Auntie Shermin here has an example. Now, of course, this wheat is not from Israel. But when we talk about a seed of a wheat plant, it is something that looks like this. Now, can you see it over here? It's very tiny, right? Yes. But in this seed, right, and if you are, if you are always doing your science experiment, you know that when you plant a little seed like that or a green bean, what will you get very soon after that? Of course, right? The bean will germinate, right? It will slowly peel open and then there will be a little stalk that grows out of it. Now, when Jesus told that, unless a corn or wheat fall into the ground, right, it will abide alone. Now, what does he mean? Now, can you see this life cycle of a plant over here? Now, this little seed that Auntie Charmaine has in my hand, where did it come from? Of course, it came from a wheat plant. And now, if this wheat plant if the farmer doesn't let it fall into the ground, plant it in the ground, all right, and then what will happen? If it doesn't do this, what will happen to this little grain over here? Of course, it will go into Auntie Charmaine's stomach, right? But if this little grain over here fall into the ground, right, and die, what will happen? It will grow, it will slowly grow, grow taller and then another wheat plant will be born right so called born all right and then very soon after what happens one little wheat plant two little wheat plant three little wheat plant and as many as all these seeds fall into the ground life will be given more of these plants will grow and then this will become life. Now, what is Jesus trying to teach here? Now, Jesus is trying to tell us something about his death. Now, just like the little corn of the wheat, the little seed that fall to the ground and die, and life comes out in a wheat plant, he's teaching us that his death is like that. His death is like this little seed that falls to the ground to give life. He's telling us that the death of Jesus himself giveth life. Now, you must ask Auntie Shermin, what are you talking about? When somebody dies, he dies. It's the end. What is Auntie Shermin talking about? What life are we talking about? Now, did Jesus really die? Yes, he did. He was tortured, he was weak, he was crucified, he did die. But why did he die? Now the reason why Jesus died was to give us life. Now look at this verse over here. Let's read together. 
Now for those who are able to find the verse, you may quickly find it in the book of Romans, right? Chapter 6, verse 23. Now let's read together. If you cannot find it, you can follow Auntie Charmaine here on the screen. Okay, are you ready? 1, 2, 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now what does this verse tell us? Now why does Jesus need to give us life? Now because, look at here, the wages of sin is death. Now the punishment of sin is death. Now, are you a sinner? Is Auntie Charmaine a sinner? Yes, all men are sinners. We do all these naughty things that disobey God. And there will only be one end to all of us. And that is death. Because the consequences of sin is death. So one day, one time, all of us on this earth, we will die. So what life are we talking about over here? The life that Jesus will give us through his death is eternal life. Now after we die, if we die in our sins, where will we go? We'll be punished in hell. And thereafter in the lake of fire. But if we believe in Jesus, if we believe that he is our saviour, now we will get eternal life. Why? Because we get the forgiveness of sin because of how he died for us on the cross. And because of this forgiveness, we'll be able to be in heaven forever. And we will have life after death. Even after we die on this earth, we will have eternal life thereafter with God in heaven. But then you also must ask Auntie Charmaine, but you told me that Jesus is powerful, then why can't he just raise us from the dead? Why can't he say, you, come up from death, be alive? Why must Jesus go to the cross for us? Now, our answer can be found in this next verse that Auntie Charmaine is going to read with you. Now, this verse is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Alright, again, if you are able to reach out to your Bible and find the verse, that's good. But if not, you may also refer to the screen and you read together with Auntie Charmaine, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Now let us read together. 1, 2, 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, who is this he? Now, this he refers to God the Father, right? For God the Father made Jesus Christ, God the Son, to be sin who knew no sin. Now, there is only one death, one person that can die in this world to give all the rest of mankind eternal life because of the forgiveness of sin. And who is that? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because over here in 2 Corinthians, it tells us this, that Jesus knew no sin. Jesus had never disobeyed God in any way and he did everything to please God. He had no sin in him, but yet he had to go to the cross. Why? Is it to die for his own sin 
Of course not. He's the Son of God. He's God himself. He had no sin, but he was made sin. He had to go to the cross to die for whose sin? Anyone can tell me? Yes, very right. It's for our sin, the sin of every man. Jesus went to the cross to die for our sin so that he alone will fulfill all the righteousness that God requires. Now, God, our Father in heaven, is a very just God. Just, what does that mean? It means that if somebody does right, of course God will reward him richly. But if somebody does anything wrong, God will of course surely punish him. And that's why because of our sins, we will be punished and we will be punished in the lake of fire. But God has sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. And why can only Jesus do that? Because he's God himself and he has no sin. Because when he dies and he has no sin in him, God says that this I will accept. Now, if Auntie Charmaine says, I love all of you so much and I want to go to the cross for you, and I tell God, Father in heaven, take my life. Let me go to the cross for these children. Do you think God will accept what I do? No. Why? Because Auntie Charmaine also has many naughty things that I do, that I say, that I think. But Jesus is different. Jesus is the Son of God with no sin. He's God himself. And that's why when he dies for our sin, God accepts what he has done. God accepts that he has taken our punishment unto himself. And therefore, when we believe in Jesus, God sees what Jesus has done for us and we receive the righteousness of Jesus and God says that all of these people that believe in Jesus, I will declare them that they have no more sins and I will accept them into my kingdom. Now then you also need to ask me one question. Auntie Charmaine, but why does Jesus do all these things for us? Jesus is God. He is in heaven. He doesn't need to care about us. And that's why we remember today. Why do we remember the death of Jesus Christ? Because the death of Jesus Christ reminds us of the love of Jesus, God the Son, and also the love of God unto all of us, mankind. And let us look at this final verse of today's Sunday School. Now this verse is taken from John 13 verse 1. Of course, I'm quite sure Auntie Charmaine knows that most of you knows John chapter 3 verse 16, right? Where it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? The Lord Jesus Christ to us, to the world, that whosoever believeth in him, right, will have everlasting life. But is it only God the Father that loves us? Of course not, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all of them are God and all of them love us the same. And especially in this verse in John 13 verse 1, it tells us that when Jesus went to the cross to die for us, he did it out of his love. Now, shall we all read this together? Now, all of you who have your Bible, try to find this verse, John chapter 13 verse 1. If not, you can read together over here with Auntie Charmaine and the rest of your friends, okay? John chapter 13 verse 1. Alright, okay, I'll give you all some time to find the verse yourself. Okay, are we ready? John 13 verse 
1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Now it was the love of Jesus for men, for his disciples, that he went to the cross to give his life up, to save us from all our sins. It was only love that made Jesus do that. Yes, we always remember that Jesus is powerful. We always remember that Jesus is without sin. But we must also remember and keep it in our hearts that he died for us because he loved us. He loved them unto the end. He loved us so much that he came down and went to the cross. And he did not just went to the cross. Now when he was on the way to the cross, he suffered so much for us. There were all the soldiers that whipped him, that called him all the names, they humiliated him, and he shed so much blood for us. And finally, when he was brought to the cross, it was a very painful death. But what made Jesus do this? Out of love. Because he knew that when he gave up his life for us, when we believe in him, he's giving also eternal life unto men. And the only way we can receive of this love is by believing in him and his name that he is the saviour of every man. And if we have received in Him, now even as we remember this Good Friday of how when Jesus went to the cross, it was out of His love for us, we must really remember this great love of Jesus, who was the Son of God, God Himself, and yet He loved us so much to die for us. Now, Auntie Charmaine can say this, even my papa and my mama cannot love me more than God. If there's anyone that loves me most in this world, it's really God. And of course, Jesus who gave his life for me. And when I remember his love for me, right about 2000 years ago, on a Friday when he went to the cross for me, Auntie Shermin can only do this one thing. And that is to say sorry, Jesus, for all the times that I have disobeyed your word, for all the times that I, I have not loved you most. And I can only pray for God's help that every day of my life from now on, I will try my best to always read the word of God and to do the word of God. Because what did Jesus say? If you love me, you will keep my commandment. You will do my word, you will obey me. Now, of course, on Good Friday, many churches will be preaching or teaching about how Jesus has died for us. And this is, of course, the same thing that Auntie Charmaine is doing here. But I pray that all of us, as we listen to these lessons, we are really not just listening in our heads, but we will really ponder, we will really think about how this Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, really loved us so, so much. And the only way that we can make such a God happy with us is of course that we first believe in Him as our Saviour 
and then after we of course obey his word now as we end today auntie charmaine is going to sing with you this song called i wish you knew my jesus now this song is really one of my prayer for all of us because the song says this i wish you knew my jesus and loved him as i do for if you knew my jesus then you would love him too if you really know what jesus has done for you as auntie charmaine has come to know i'm very sure that you will also love him now he loved us so much that he gave his life at calvary the sacrifice for you if you receive my jesus then you will love him too all right so as we ponder about how jesus went to the cross to give us life let us sing this song together, all right? And let us pray for all of those children who do not know Jesus yet, that they may also come to know Jesus. And I pray that all of you, when you go to meet your friends again, right, when the school reopens, that you will also find courage to share with them about Jesus. Because if everyone really knew who Jesus was, what he has done for us right we can be very sure that they will also know jesus as their savior okay so let's sing this last song from the bottom of our hearts all right prayerfully okay are you ready one two three i wish you knew my jesus and loved him as i do for if you knew my jesus then you would love him too he gave his life at calvary the sacrifice for you if you receive my jesus then you will love him too well done all right so i hope that today's lesson was one that was helpful for you to remember the love of jesus and i pray especially those who do not know jesus yet know that he loves you so much that he went to the cross to die for you so that you may receive eternal life all right so let us pray hands together eyes closed let's pray our father in heaven we thank you even for this lesson today that we can truly learn about why jesus has to go to the cross to die for us we thank you because his death has given us the forgiveness of sins that even we may be counted made righteous before god that even our sins may be forgiven and that we may even have eternal life we thank you especially because it is out of love for us that jesus went to the cross for us we pray father that you will help us to remember this this great love of jesus and we ask for your forgiveness each time we have not loved you enough each time we have disobeyed you we pray father that you will help us to obey you more and more each day and to love you more and more each day Help us to remember the love of Christ, not just on Good Friday or even when Passion Week arrives, but help us to remember it every day of our lives, that even we may be children, Christian, that brings glory to your name, 
and please you. So Lord, we ask especially for your mercies to save those who do not yet know Jesus as their Saviour unto yourself, so that they may also come to know the love of Christ and to have eternal life. Continue to bless us all and continue to bring us back here again on Sunday when we continue to remember the work of Jesus and how we will praise your name. Be with us, O Father, in Jesus' precious and holy name we ask and pray. Amen. Right, children, thank you for your attention and I hope that you will have some time spent to do your activities or worksheets later on, alright? So I'll see you next time. Bye!